Okay. Um, I, I, I was thinking earlier today when the bullying started for me. And it was preschool. I don't know exactly why. I assume because I was different. Um, there were various ways I was different, but I, I imagine there was some kind of whiff of queerness about me. Um, and I lived in a, a building, an apartment building, and it was them against me. There was a horde of kids. And I would uh, run, run up to my apartment before they could see me cry, and my mother would say, sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you, and she was lying. Um, so, I, you know, I learned to hide all that stuff, hide the crying, hide the hurt. Um, and I did have a cat named Murgatroyd who would meow <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Murgatroyd actually was my best friend. Um, I could always uh, find comfort with him. And, and then um, I learned how to run faster think faster, um, do things like, well, find ways to get around what they were doing. And, and that was very helpful. And in that way, I thank my mother for making me come up with my own devices because somehow or other I got through all that. Um, school was better until high school. No, excuse me, until junior high school. Then the schoolyard bullying started, and they would call me Butch um, and other names that I didn't even know what they meant. I never knew what the word lesbian or homosexual was until I came out at 15. Um, and at that point, I was so excited and so proud and so defiant that it kind of equaled out the bullying I got in high school. And I'll, I'll tell a really brief story about my worst bully in high school. He was a good-looking blonde guy um, who would, you know, corner me in the library or where, wherever and be loud about it in front of his friends. And, and uh, of course, it was devastating at first, but, um, well, it was devastating, period. Then I learned he was going to the same college I was going to. And we didn't have much interaction there because he was in a, a, a slick fraternity. I think it was called Slick, SLK. And I was the like the school poet, barefoot poet walking around campus. And uh, it, it was the, the years of drugs and, and, you know, dope and all that stuff. And our worlds indirectly coincided. Um, and one day a, a friend of his, a woman who was by, came to me and said that uh, Larry sent his apologies for what he'd done in high school. And a few years later I learned that he had come out. And a few years later I learned that he'd killed himself. So the lesson to me was it's not just who's being bullied, it's the bulliers also who suffer. And, and you know, I mourn him to this day, I really do. I, I, I wish I could read somewhere that he had become a success and, and you know, was living a happy, hopefully gay life. Um, and, and other than those kinds of real personal, direct, inside my own environment kind of bullying, uh, most butch lesbians or tomboys or whatever we want to call ourselves experience the daily humiliation. I can remember walking along the street with my mother as an adult and people were still saying, are you a boy or are you a girl? You know, little kids would be saying that and I, I, w I lived in terror that my mother would find out uh, because my mother, I never came out to her. She was Catholic. She already thought I was going to burn in hell for other reasons. Uh, numerous other reasons, <laughs> and uh, I just couldn't do that to her or to myself because I mean, it would it would not resolve anything. It would just torment her. So um, that never happened. I, I was I'm very grateful that never happened for her sake and, and mine. Um, and and then of course the bathroom incidents. Uh, I remember once in New Haven, Connecticut, which is supposed to be somewhat 
mm, sophisticated. I go to a woman's room and they send a male waiter after me, <laughs> saying, oh, a woman's room, etc. And uh, I just learned to smile. And when you smile going, for all of you who haven't learned this yet, when you smile going into a, a woman's room, uh, they know you're a woman. I don't know what that says about men, but it certainly has helped me. Um, and today, it's better. Today, I, I, I realized my dream of becoming a writer. Um, there are younger writers coming after me who tell me that I've, I've made a difference. And I will continue to do my best to make a difference for them, for you, for me. Because it does get better and can only get better still. Thank you, Carson. One other way that it got better for me is that at the age of 61, I met the love of my life. And this year, just a week ago in Provincetown, we were legally married. Both our families came to the ceremony, including my brother, my sister-in-law, my niece. Somehow getting married in front of family is one of the most validating things that I've experienced. I know it has strengthened our relationship and helped to make marriage all it can be.